Hi everyone, uh, in this video we're taking a look at the, uh, let's say, more updated version of the MMU clone uh, that I've made. So it's been quite a few weeks since I've posted a video, so that's why I have uh, a lot of few small things that I need to cover. Um, so for the people that are new to this channel, what we're trying to do here is uh, build a multi-material upgrade. Uh, so basically uh, enable multi-color and multi-material printing. Uh, on basically almost any 3D printer, so any 3D printer that runs uh, Marlin, and uh, doing that while remaining at a relatively low cost. Uh, so let's roll the intro and get right into it. So one of the key changes I've made in between last version, so from last video and this video, is uh, we have switched to um, from the 11 millimeter brass gears that you see right here to MK8 gears. Um, and I'm going to show you those right now. So the main difference is the MK8 gears um, have that little groove um, in the middle of them that you can see and where the filament goes and that means that they have way more grabbing power uh, and this is a key element for what we want to do here. Since we want to use the MMU as a Bowden style setup, so using the MMU2 as the extruder itself, uh, we need to have all the power um, from the extruder and all the grabbing power from the extruder we can have uh, so that we're able to put enough pressure um, on the filament uh, to extrude properly. Uh, and uh, because I made that change and I had basically everything ready to go, I was able to do the first actual real life test. And this test was unsuccessfully successful, so the print did fail. So what I was trying to do is use the MME2 as a button style extruder. And uh, I was doing a print with a single um, filament, uh, so a single color, no filament change there. Uh, but just checking whether the MME2 could work as the extruder, as the only extruder. Because uh, that was my main concern when uh, going this way with the uh, MMU clone. And uh, the results were positive. So uh, essentially the print failed after like three or four layers. Uh, but essentially it was unrelated to the MMU and to the, the gears and whatever we're doing. It's because um, the printer had a problem that was in, in the heating block that was triggering the Marlin security. So it halted the print after a few layers when the fans kicked in. Uh, I'm going to get that sorted out, of course, but for now, um, this is what we have. Um, and this just means that in terms of price, it will be way cheaper um, of the two options. So if it didn't work, that meant that we had to go with a direct drive. So you need to transition your 3D printer to a direct drive setup. So you need an extra separate motor, but that means that you also need an extra separate motor control on your motherboard. Uh, so that means that you need like seven separate motor control on your motherboard. And that means that very, very few motherboards are compatible so you will most likely need to also change your motherboard uh, but the test was successful so that means that we um, are good to go with uh, this type of setup and that means that in terms of the price range uh, it will most likely even be below 100 US dollars um, for the entire MMU2 uh, depending on your setup because you may have to change your motherboard as well. Uh, another few changes I've made, um, but we'll go over them a bit later when we're in uh, Fusion 360, uh, is that I use um, heated inserts. Uh, so those are just way cleaner, the, this little um, golden piece right here, uh, which is essentially you use a soldering iron or whatever to heat it up and then you insert it into the print and uh, it gives a cleaner result than embedded nuts. I will give those two options because some people may just want to use uh, M3 nuts instead of um, of uh, heated inserts, uh, but it's uh, a nice to have and it's, it gives way cleaner results. Um, and everything else I think I will cover in uh, Fusion 360, so uh, we'll get uh, launch up Fusion 360 and uh, check out the uh, model changes that I've made um, to the MMU and this MMU clone uh, and the main one are because we changed gears so of course since we are changing gears we are also changing active diameter of the gear and we're changing the actual diameter of the gear so our original ones were nine millimeters and the active diameter was exactly the same because it's a, just a regular gear and on the MK8 gears I believe it's uh, nine millimeters and uh, seven millimeters of active diameter uh, so those are just it meant that I had to redesign the entire uh, assembly, uh, but this was uh, not such a problem since I had planned to do this 
uh, from the beginning and uh, it was just good that I did it once I changed um, the gears I was using uh, so that I wouldn't have to redo it again. So uh, yeah, let's get right into it. And now regarding the overall physical assembly, I did have to make quite a few changes as I mentioned previously. Uh, so those changes, as you can see, I've went through a lot of versions and also based a bit myself off of uh, Paul's design. Um, and uh, yeah, so essentially the version that I'm on right now is uh, V4 right here. Uh, and um, I've made quite a few changes as you can see. So um, let's open that up so that we have a clear view of everything. Um, so for the Euler body, uh, as you can see, I cut a lot of material so that enables two things. So first off, we have the access to the screw that is way easier uh, if you go look at the way it's done on the previous design. Uh, it's night and day, so assembly will be way easier on that. Uh, let me get a bit smaller in on this side because I'm covering things up. Um, and uh, I did the same thing uh, on the pulley body. So you can see here that access to the screw uh, is way simpler uh, than on the original design. Um, other benefits of that material um, removal is that uh, print times are reduced by a lot. So actually the idler body prints in like four hours on relatively drafty like um, uh, parameters. Uh, and uh, one small mistake I made uh, when doing that, it's uh, I was working late at night on this, uh, is I actually placed the end stop on the wrong side of the uh, Euler, so it's, it's something I'm gonna have to fix. Um, and uh, other than that, I need to work on a few clearances, but otherwise the design works well. Another modification is that the actual assembly uh, of the Euler body in the Euler is way simpler now. So on my first design, I had essentially a cut right here, uh, which enabled you to pass like half of the uh, Iler in, then slide it in there, push it back in, put the motor in, and then you also had to get the correct like angle at which you place it in because there were these lines and grooves for the bearings to go in. So I essentially got, got rid of the grooves because I don't feel like you need them, they don't bring anything. Um, and I also uh, made that bearing fixation um, a, a, a press fit like kind of uh, joint uh, where you just push the bearing in and it can kind of clips on it because those are relatively thin so it can bend a little and then it holds the bearing uh, in place and makes assembly a lot easier. Uh, now on the pulley body side of things so uh, we have um, so pneumatic couplers on the output uh, so those are PC4M6 um, then we have on the input, it's a simple uh, 3D printed tube with a small fillet on the outside uh, in order to um, make inserted filaments easier. Um, as you can see, I've also cut a lot of material uh, right here without um, making the print require support. Um, so essentially that means faster print times. Uh, and as I said before, I needed to adapt uh, the design to fit those new uh, gears. And one thing I did in that design is that I uh, parametrized a lot of it so I can easily change settings uh, depending on what I observe when testing. So essentially, if I need more clearance, I can just change uh, a small parameter inside of there and everything will be good to go. Um, is there anything else? Uh, yeah, I just want to point out uh, one cool thing that I uh, did and actually learned when making that design is for holes that actually need to be relatively accurate, uh, including that one, when pr you're printing them like horizontally, um, because it's a layer by layer process, uh, your circle won't be perfect. It will actually be like kind of cut on the uh, top. And uh, this is why you have that small uh, triangle shape on top. Uh, that makes it so that the circle is actually the right diameter um, overall. And this is important because the axle needs to move freely inside of there. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it for the uh, design. And uh, we'll get right into the uh, software side of things.
configuration.h file, which is essentially uh, for the people that have never configured Marlin um, uh, themselves. It's essentially that with configuration adv.h file are the two main file that you're going to modify in order to set up Marlin for your specific printer. Uh, and essentially I've added all the settings you need so that you don't have to go inside mmu, mpmmu.cpp and the specific code uh, that I wrote uh, to set everything you may need to set. So uh, you have a few settings. So button tube length uh, would be the length from the MMU2 to the nozzle uh, or when working with a direct drive um, setup would be the length from the end of your merger uh, to your extruder. Um, then you're able to define the pin on which you're running your um, extruder, idler, and if you're running a direct drive setup, your extruder, uh, your actual extruder. Um, and those are not really the pin. Uh, what they are is essentially the extruder number that it corresponds to. So um, in your pins.h file, you essentially have for every board specified that have multiple extruder ports, E0, E1, E2, or how many, whatever, how many numbers of extruders you can have. And essentially, 0, 1, 2 will be able to switch between those extruders. And you want to define those because, of course, someone may plug the idler in something different than someone else may do. Uh, then we have two other settings, uh, which are direct drive and um, or button tube. So you select one of those two settings and that will enable uh, or disable different parts of the code. And now looking at the code, uh, I did a few things. Uh, so most of it is uh, cleaning things up, adding a few descriptions. Um, but we'll now look at uh, the actual uh, tool change, which is we can look at one of them because they're essentially all the same. So um, we have a sequence to unload the filament and then if a direct drive is enabled, uh, when you unload uh, with the MMU, you also need to unload with the extruder because otherwise the actual extruder holds the filament in place uh, and the MMU tries to pull and what you actually want is the uh, extruder to pull the filament and the MMU to pull it um, at the same time. Uh, then you have the idler selection. Um, Essentially, this is the same as last time. We just uh, have added um, the MU idler pin. So that means that you can configure which pin you've connected your idler to. Um, and then reload the new filament. It's essentially the same, but once again, we move the MMU with the extruder in uh, unison so that they don't work against each other. Um, and then we have one last thing that if you're working with direct drive, um, this is the way I've chosen to go, but it, it may change a bit later, is uh, once you want to start printing and start extruding, uh, the way it works uh, in this program is essentially your idler goes to the part position. Uh, so essentially it goes back to a home stage where with no bearing being in contact with any filament. That means that the filament can go through smoothly through the um, MMU and the entire Bowden tomb system. Uh, and uh, that essentially means that the it's working as a direct drive setup, not, nothing attached to it. And the MMU2 is doing no work um, other than changing the filament. Uh, but if this causes some problem, what I may need to add is to make the MMU extruder work in unison. Uh, but I'm trying to avoid it for now because it would mean that the extruder on the MMU and the extruder on the printer would need to be synchronized really well and that would be hard to do because there are a few differences and there's an amount of slippage with every extruder assembly uh, and that's unavoidable so if I could try to save us a bit of work in the um, synchronization side of things uh, it would be great. Um, other than that I didn't add much to the code um, I did replace boolean uh, with bool, so essentially the problem, so if you saw my previous videos, I was talking about, hey, why is boolean deprecated? Uh, it's actually because we're in C++, so the correct operator for that would be bool, uh, and boolean was actually being accepted because um, Marlin also works on, it's like part, of, it's not part of it, but essentially uh, 30 printers originally we're running on like Arduinos and uh, you could compile Marlin using the Arduino ID and Arduino does support Boolean 
uh, and actually the, the correct um, thing would be boolean but in that case uh, that's why it was causing the deprecated error and um, I just switch it to bool uh, so that we have uh, let's say cleaner code uh, and that's basically it um, on the firmware side of things hey you made it to the end of the video uh, so first of all I want to say well thank you um, to both the people that are subscribed and to the people that just watched this video uh, so I've reached and actually passed 100 subscribers so even if it's a small milestone it still means something to me uh, so yeah just thank you for that it's uh, really fun doing those videos um, and if you're not subscribed and you want to stay up to date and notified whenever I make some kind of progress and so that you're able to know uh, when we actually have a functional prototype uh, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications uh, so that you uh, can stay up to date um, with this uh, project that I have going on here. Um, if you want to be a little more involved, uh, you can also go down in the description where I have uh, both a GitHub and uh, a Discord server linked. Uh, so in the Discord server, there's a dedicated update channel. So whenever I do a small modification, I post it in there. And uh, if you have any questions or want to reach out to me, uh, well, you can do it um, through Discord uh, or through mail. I'll probably have my email somewhere uh, in there. And in the GitHub, essentially everything you see in those videos um, is already on the GitHub at the time you see it. So uh, if you have a file that you want to see, that you want to modify, or if you want to take a look at the code, um, well, it's everything is on the GitHub. So uh, it's also linked down in the description. And uh, yeah, see you guys next time.